morning, my faithful and loyal YouTube subscribers. Today is Friday, the 13th. The year is 2020. And here in Georgia, they've shut down all the schools and um, co colleges, places, school, colleges, sports, sporting events. Everything has been shut down because the coronavirus is now running wild in the streets of Atlanta. To be honest with you all, I think the coronavirus has been here for a few weeks now. And, and because we don't have adequate testing in place uh, to test people as they get sick, there are a lot of people who are possibly sick and they're really, it will take a lengthy time for them to get an answer back. Because I was sick for the past two weeks and I was very concerned, but there was nothing I could do about being tested. Donald Trump had dropped the ball on this whole testing thing. And um, quarantine the quarantine the people who have been tested positive. Um, the whole thing, like the Chinese, the Chinese did a very good job of um, quarantining people who were positive, or even if they suspected were positive, or who had symptoms, shutting down entire cities. Um, but here in the United States, it's just kind of like a free fall. Free, it's just like it's just it's kind of almost haphazardly. Um, they're not really, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think they're even investigating the people who do test positive, how they possibly could have come in contact with the virus because they really don't know how. But I think the virus has probably been circulating in parts of the United States. Um, I, I think we've all pretty much probably been exposed to it. Um, there's a two week incubation period. And, uh, I've talked to a lot of my friends. Everybody's been sick, including me. Everybody was sick for the past few weeks. So... For people to be testing positive, I think you're seeing the more acute cases, uh, people who really get sick um, that are showing up in the news media because they're so sick they're being hospitalized and as they get to the hospital, they're testing them. But some of us who got sick and didn't require hospitalization, we don't know what it was we had, you know, so who knows. Is there cause for panic? I think there's cause for panic if every hospital, as this disease continues to spread and make more people sick, um, a lot of people are not taking this very seriously. And this is the mistake that they're making. As more and more patients get sick from the coronavirus and they end up in the hospitals on ICU and on ventilators and the hospitals are overwhelmed. If you were in a car accident or injured yourself or hurt yourself and had to be taken to the hospital, they probably wouldn't have no bed space for you because they got so many people. They will have, could possibly have so many people and they're suffering from the effects of the coronavirus that they're not going to be able to see the regular patients who are getting injured and sick in car accidents, strokes, or just the everyday events that happen and might that require you to go to the hospital. And I think that's what, where we, we should be concerned about as, over the next few weeks as more and more people become infected and become and get sick. Do we have enough bed space to adequately treat and um, deal with these patients on top of the, all the other patients we have? That's why the Chinese very quickly built hospitals, temporary hospitals to house the sick patients so they can treat them. I don't see Donald Trump building no temporary hospitals nowhere. I don't think Donald Trump, I don't think anybody's really taking it as serious as, as it possibly can get. So we just have to sit back and see what happens, how how this will be handled, if it will be handled effectively or not. You know, just it makes you wonder, how will this be handled? How will people um, be able to, to survive this? Will they be able to? It makes you wonder. Um, we already know it, it has not been handled correctly from the very beginning. And as the situation moves forward, moving forward, it's still, I think they said something like Georgia's trying to get up, trying to set up so they'll be able to test at least 100 people a day. There are millions of people in the Atlanta area, millions of people in the state of Georgia. And they're only going to be able to, the state is trying to get up to be able to, to at least be able to test 100 people. In other countries, they were testing 10, 15, 20,000 people a day. So you know what was going on. But here, I don't understand their logic. I don't, I'm trying to figure out what, what confusion. 
Something's not right. But, you know, Donald Trump is the president. Y'all voted for him to be in office. And you know, I think a lot of people about to get what they voted for. About to see with the stock market cratering because of concerns about not enough adequate attention if, uh, if, or, him, or his administration being effective enough to stop it. And I love how people say, well, the flu did this and the flu did that. Well, I remember one thing I remember after going through this whole ordeal with Earl. When Earl first got to the very first hospital at Emory, he was in the emergency room. When I got there, the first head nurse came up to me and said, listen, we don't have any bed space at this hospital. We're going to transfer you all to another hospital. I said, where? She said, I'm checking to see where there's some bed space because we don't have any bed space here. So she left. So in the midst of her going to check and find other bed space, Earl's situation began to deteriorate rather rapidly. And Earl um, coded literally a few minutes minutes after that woman left to go get find us an ambulance and transfer us to another hospital. Had they put us in that ambulance or put Earl in that ambulance and transferred us to another hospital, I don't think that would have turned out too well. Earl coded in the emergency room at that hospital and they quickly found a bed for his behind upstairs. And that kind of frightened me. Every time I think back to it, I was like, wow, we could have been sitting on a wild goose chase to find another hospital because they were so packed over there at that hospital from dealing with people with the flu. And in that in that hospital, in that, in that ambulance, it, things could have went haywire. If he had a code in that ambulance, I don't know what would have happened. Because when he coded in the emergency room, there was 20, 30, 20, 10, 15, 20, 30 people running around him trying to get him back alive. So I try not to think about the, the, the negatives there, but I'm like, this, that could have been a catastrophe. Trying to transfer us to another hospital. Transfer Earl to another hospital. But they quickly found a bed for him at that hospital. So I listen to all y'all folks pretending like, oh, it ain't nothing. And don't worry about it. And everything going to be hunky-dory. And it's a conspiracy. And the media is blowing it all out of proportion. But y'all not watching the news reports coming out of Italy, are you? Or North Korea. Or France, which is about to happen. But Italy's got it bad right now. All their hospitals are overwhelmed. Italy has a state-of-the-art medical system over there. One of the best in Europe. And they cannot handle the patients that they're getting in there on a regular basis. Read about it. I yesterday spent some time just kind of Googling some news articles to see what was going on in Italy. And it ain't looking good over there. That's why they locked down the whole country. Try to get a hold on it. But it might be a little too late. So, let's see what happens. What happens? It's just a matter of time to figure out what may or may not happen. But here in Atlanta, they close all the schools. And there's a situation taking place here where a lot of kids, um, and then I think the schools might be closed for two, two, three weeks, maybe a month. Who knows? But a lot of children go to school. Yeah, I'm burning up this apartment. I don't know. I think it's this light I have on. I'm hot. I'm like, man, could be just coffee too. But a lot of kids get their breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the schools here in Atlanta, probably nationwide. But with these schools closed, they're trying to figure out how they're going to feed these children. And that's a, a serious issue when children are so used to eating at school, and now all of a sudden the schools are, are uh, closed it cannot open because this, they, no one was expecting it. Although I knew this was going to happen. I knew they were going to have to close these schools. When Earl went back to school, I said, Earl, they're going to close these schools. Watch. And I was right. I was right on the money. So, but they got to find a way to feed the children. And some parents are angry because they don't have any child care. Or they don't know what to do with their kids. And being poor in America and having children ain't no fun. That's why I ain't got that. And there was a situation here in Atlanta. There was a young woman who was, um, four people were killed in a car accident. A car, a Nissan Central lost control somewhere in Southwest Atlanta and ran into a MARTA bus, killing four passengers in the car. One of the passengers was a mother to two or three other people in the vehicle. She was a mother. She had two of her kids in there on top of being pregnant with yet another child. 
Mm-hmm. She was she was killed in a car accident. Her new her child that she was potentially going to have died, and her two of her children died. And there was another young lady who died too. Very sad, tragic situation. Very, very, very sad, tragic situation. But um, it just makes you wonder. You know, all that, that woman had three children. She had two children already, possibly three. It was five people. It was the four or five people that died in that car accident. That Marta bus, that, that Nissan Century, that Marta bus. <clears throat> I think it was four or five people. Maybe so. But maybe two or three of them were children. And you have to wonder, when these black women go out here and have these babies, they have all these children and by these worthless men, no way to take care of these kids, no game plan. You already got a couple of children and you're pregnant with another one. Where are the fathers? It's just a lot of questions I had about that incident. And it's tragic because now they're trying to do, do a GoFundMe to bury, to occupy, to bury everybody that was killed in this car accident. It's just sad. It's just very, very sad. And um, it just makes you wonder about our community. So now you got all these kids, parents trying to figure out how they're going to feed their children you know, when I was in school, we did, we received free lunch program, but the funny part is, we, I remember at, at, every, every morning when I was a little kid, me ate my mother or father cooked breakfast, and then we we had a little lunch sack that we carried to school, and then eventually we started eating the lunch at the school system, because we didn't want to carry the lunch no more. But, um, uh, and I remember coming home at lunchtime, that's how long ago that was, coming home for lunch and then going back to school. I remember that. That's how long that was. They don't do none of that no more. I don't even know if they allow these kids to bring their own lunch into the school system anymore. But it's tragic to get all these kids out of school and no food for them now. They're trying to figure out how they're going to feed these kids in the midst of a coronavirus. So it is another thing. So I have made the decision I'm not going to the gym right now. Most of the gyms are just, there's, there's no way... Even if you wipe the equipment down and spray that every, every can of Lysol you can get your hands on at Walmart, I think you're still going to be at risk if the, someone in there has that virus. People in there breathing, sweating, uh, working out. Uh, <laughs> I'll pass for that for right now. And people say, yeah, well, a, bit, a lot of my friends are like, wow, why are you? Uh, uh, look, I just set up at the hospital for the past two or three months with Earl and he was on a respirator. I know what pneumonia like is like. I ain't about to go through that myself. I don't know what going on with this dang going with coronavirus. I sit my ass and I could get him running around this parking lot out here. I, I can wait a few weeks. Shit. A few weeks won't kill me. Um, I've been working out all my life. I don't think missing a few weeks at LA Fitness is all of a sudden going to turn me into, um, make my health decline. I waited out. For those of you who want to continue to go, and then another thing too, I was watching the news. They were saying about eating out, going to restaurants that you might want to start preparing your own food. I got a grocery store, a refrigerator, and cabinets full of food over here. I'm about to cook my own breakfast. I'm going to eat right here. I'm not going to do no drive-throughs, no restaurants, no nada. I'm going to eat here. All right here in the comfort of my home. Whip, whip me up some eggs and eat, and be done with it. Do I have a choice? Now, if y'all got, look, I'm just being precautious. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to. Y'all grown ass motherfuckers. Y'all can do the fuck y'all want to. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of Walter. I can't take the risk. I don't know what's going on. I may have already been exposed to coronavirus. I don't know. I tell you what, I'm cool with camping out here, eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and exercise, and y'all can do this parking lot and do this. I'm staying away from crowds of people. I ain't gonna be sitting up in no club talking about, so let's take pictures together, y'all. Hell no. Y'all, y'all can go ahead and live and do whatever y'all want to. Live whatever life you choose to live. You don't have to live in fear, but do not, like my mom and scarf tell me. You ripping and running them streets at night? Don't you call me when you end up in dumb damn emergency room. I get locked up in jail and all this stuff because I'm turning my phone off when I go to bed. I do turn this phone off at bed too and go off when I go to sleep. I ain't about to sit up next to nobody in no ICU. I ain't going to no emergency room. I ain't picking up no flowers and food from restaurants because you laid up there and you don't like the hospital food. I didn't. Do, I did my share that these past few weeks. I'm done with that. 
to those of you who don't take care of your health and you end up laid up in the hospital dealing with some issues like that, you on your own. I ain't coming. You can send me a message through Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. I respond there, but as we sit up the next to your head and laying up there looking at you hooked up to a ventilator, I ain't doing it. So y'all best best to stay your ass at home. Stay out these restaurants, stay out these gyms, tell your employer you will work from home until this thing blow over. And it will blow over, I guess, sometime soon. We'll see. But it's just getting started. There's nothing wrong with, with, with being nothing wrong for preparing for the worst, but hoping for the best. There's nothing wrong with that. So that's what I'm doing over preparing for the worst. But I'm hoping for the best. Hopefully things will be fine and things will return back to normal. We won't have some of the stuff that's going on overseas in Italy and uh, various other countries. Maybe we won't hit that well. You won't know. I have a sneaky suspicion we off to a bad start. That's what concerns me. We all sit to such a bad start with testing and monitoring. Um, and something just, I don't think it's going to end well. But we'll see. But anyway, today it is Friday the 13th, Friday, March 13th, the year is 2020, 2020, uh, somebody wrote out what's that, 2010 in the video, I know, I know it's 2020, we went through no damn time warp, but I'm going to make me some breakfast, prepare myself to, I need to take a shower, too. I'm sweaty, I'm hot, mm. I had to turn on the air conditioner last night, this damn cubby hole. It was hot as hell in here last night. I'm going to turn on this air and give me a fresh cup of coffee and take me a shower. Anyway, I'm out of here. You all enjoy the rest of your Friday. I look forward to reading you all's comments. And, you know, be careful. Just be careful. I hope y'all are taking it serious. Don't listen to your Facebook friends. And some black folks can't get the coronavirus. A bunch of ignorant ass shit that they posting about. Be careful. Do your research. Read. Uh, get an understanding of what's going on. And then make a wise, educated decision about your life as you proceed forward. All right, I'm out of here. Have a good day.